In plagiarism, we trust. What if this was the official motto of our class? Motto is defined as a sentence, phrase, or word inscribed on something as appropriate to or indicative of its character or use. A short expression of a guiding principle. In plagiarism, we trust would be stamped on all of our papers and would be engraved in bold letters above every professor's lecture. And as a member of this class, by default, this now applies to you. The same can be said for the national motto of the United States of America, In God We Trust. However, the motto contradicts what the Founding Fathers visioned, it has been altered and misconstrued by our government, and it infringes upon the religious freedoms of all American people. In fact, the original de facto motto of E Pluribus Unum should once again become the motto for the United States of America. According to a poll, 60% of all adults believe the Founding Fathers intended for the United States to be a Christian nation. Many argue America was framed on Christianity and the Declaration of Independence proves it. In The Faith of the Founding Fathers by David Holmes, he states, In the Declaration of Independence, the various religious influences from deism to utilitarianism can be deducted from the four references in the document. It's clear the theological beliefs mentioned in, the, in this document were as diverse as the Founding Fathers who drafted and signed it. Although religion may have been alluded to in the, in the document, God was never specifically mentioned. We also do not see God in, mentioned in the Constitution of the United States. Later amendments would be added to the Constitution. They would be added to prevent misconstruction or abuse of its powers and enhance public confidence. The first of these would state that the government, sh the government shall make no established religion or infringe upon the rights of citizens to practice their personal religion. Still no mention of God. Even the great seal of the United States is void of any mention of God. Many designs, some depicting biblical references such as Moses parting the Red Sea, were offered, yet, to, yet according to Peter Gardella's America's Civil Religion, the chosen, design came, the chosen design contained the unofficial motto, E Pluribus Unum, translated out of many one. In fact, to this day, that is the only motto that is on the seal. Our, our founding fathers were very clear. Personal religious choices were just that, personal. The government's role was to protect the people's civil liberties and leave religion out of it. This remained the case until 1864, when the phrase, In God We Trust, would first be imprinted on our coins, and again in 1956 when signed into law as the national motto of the United States. In 2011, in a report by the House of Representatives, our own government admits that the national motto is based on a religious belief, saying, the motto, In God We Trust, was placed on United States coins largely because of increased religious sentiment existing during the Civil War, urging that the United States recognize the deity, God, on United States coins. In the very same report, our judicial system assigned their own definition to the motto in order to uphold the constitutionality of it, saying that through constant repetition, it has largely lost its religious content. No longer religious in nature, the phrase has become rather a historical artifact. If it has been ruled constitutional because it no longer holds the meaning it once did, then it stands to reason it was not constitutional in the first place, when its purpose was to promote Christianity, which is a religion. According to our government, if we repeat it enough, it will no longer mean the same thing. Redefining the motto so it can remain in use has allowed our government to have its cake and to eat it too. All Americans are labeled as having a trust in God, which infringes upon their religious freedom. The Establishment Clause of the First Amendment says Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. Also, it prohibits the government from favoring one religion over another, from preferring religion over non-religion, and to protect the private rights of the Americans and the government not be involved in the religious affairs. The government argues that the national motto is excluded from this, and it is excluded because the motto has no theological or ritualistic impact and is of a purely secular, patriotic, and ceremonial character. When Congress signed into law a phrase using the word God at all, it favored one religion over another and by default preferred religion over non-religion. If you believe in God, then knowing that the government has reduced your faith to an artifact that is nothing more than secular, patriotic, and ceremonial instead of the personal right that it is, should enrage you. Those that do not believe in God should be enraged as well, that their national motto labels them as trusting in something they do not believe in. 
They cannot proudly declare their country's guiding principles since they do not believe in God. A poll in 2022 shows the steady decline of the number of Americans who believe in God. What was once the belief of the majority of Americans is increasingly becoming the minority. As the religious beliefs of the American people change, allowing the government to continue to use the word God in our national motto infringes upon the religious rights of all Americans. This speech is not about whether you, you do or do not believe in God or which religion you practice. This speech is to open the eyes of the American people that the motto, In God We Trust, contradicts why this country was created in the first place. At the same time, in order to uphold the constitutionality of it, our government has altered the meaning of the phrase, which infringes upon every American's civil liberty. Thomas Jefferson said himself, the reason for the original separation in 1776 was because of the forced religion of Great Britain. This country was formed from diversity that accumulated into one nation. E pluribus unum, translated out of many one, can not only be applied to all Americans, but best represents the character and guiding principles of the people and should once again become the motto for the United States of America.